Without any further ado, we are going to move to the next presentation, which is a soil nitrate quick test. And let's get that open. And basically, we're going to be uh, hearing a presentation from Dr. Jerry Spinelli. And he is the Agricultural uh, Technical Specialist for Santa Cruz Research Conservation District. And uh, basically, Jerry uh, studied agronomy and tropical agriculture at the University of Florence. Wow. And has a master's degree in international agriculture development and a PhD degree in horticulture and agronomy from the University of California at Davis. And he's been focusing on plant physiology and water stress. Dr. Spinelli has several years of experience in water uh, California, and um, he will be talking about promoting the adoption of soil nitrogen quick tests by Spanish-speaking operators on strawberry ranches in Santa Cruz and Monterey County. So nitrate quick tests have been around for a while for lettuce, but I think a very important uh, tool for managing nitrogen. Take it away, Jerry. Yes, thank you. My name is Jerry Spinelli. I worked until two weeks ago, I worked for the Research Conservation District of Santa Cruz County. And this, uh, um, today I want to talk about this project that we um, had um, with the uh, uh, nitrogen quick tests. There is a lot of interest out there in learning how to uh, use this tool. And, uh, and, but this project was specifically for uh, Spanish speakers um, that uh, many uh, ranch managers and agricultural operators so the, 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 the project was about training uh, on how to use the quick test, but then we expanded on different, uh, on training on different uh, um, issues with the nitro nitrogen management. And uh, this was uh, a, a outreach and education project, so we didn't do any research, but uh, rather we uh, used the, the, the research that is already out there, the knowledge that was developed by uh, these uh, researchers that I would like to acknowledge and, uh, and uh, um, the idea was uh, delivering this information to the people in the field that can, that can, that can use it and that are interested in, in using it. Um, so the, the question was, how, how, do I, how do I translate this information in a way that um, that can be used by operators in the field. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna briefly present the, the 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 problem. I'm gonna talk briefly about the sources of nitrogen for a crop, and then I'm gonna talk about the equipment that it, that we um, uh, suggest uh, growers use in the field to run the the quick test, and then I'm gonna summarize the activities and the tools uh, that we developed, and I'm gonna finish by presenting some of the challenges that are still there uh, in the field. So uh, the quick test uh, has been around for a long time. I think the older, the older um, um, literature I could find uh, written by uh, Tim Hart was from the 90s. So it's something that has been around for a long time and uh, yet um, there, is still a, there are still some barriers for uh, adoptions. And uh, um, of course, the problem is nitrogen, uh, nitrate particular is an environmental concern because it leaches easily, easily doesn't bind to the soil. Uh, so it gets into groundwater and uh, in counties where um, drinking water is, is uh, uh, groundwater is used as uh, drinking water, then there's this EPA limit for uh, health that is 10 ppm of concentration and it's really challenging for some areas to, to meet it. And also, uh, nitrate on surface water gives eutrophication, meaning that all these algae grow a lot and use all the uh, available uh, dissolved oxygen, and then that's bad for wildlife. Um, we know that there are stricter regulations uh, uh, for water quality in runoff, and the growers uh, in many counties have to um, report uh, how much nitrogen was, apply was applied, and these regulations are, are only getting stricter, so there's more and more interest to interest in the field in tools to manage uh, uh, nitrogen. Uh, there is also a institutional issue where there, where there is different levels of, of people um, within the farming operation. So there is a grower that may take some decisions, but then there is a farm manager and then under that there is an irrigator and sometimes there may be even another level like a mayordomo in between. 
and through this chain, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes we see that there are um, poor communication, and so often the people that are at the bottom at the bottom of this chain, meaning the irrigator or the tractor driver or or the or the field worker, uh, end up take, taking decisions on how much to apply nitrogen to apply, and these people often only speak Spanish, so this was our uh, goal of this project, and and also there is little familiarity with math, with calculation, and also the, the approach is very qualitative, so the idea is a little, just right, a lot, too much, you know, so these are the categories, it's hard, it's not like 5 or 50 or 500 or 0.5, um, so it's very, it's very qualitative, it's hard to um, communicate the idea of a quantitative approach. On the other hand, we see a lot of potential for conservation, particularly in the second cycle uh, during the season, um, during uh, spring and summer, typically there is time for two cycles of vegetables, and the previous one leaves quite a good amount of nitrogen in the soil. So the second cycle, um, there is a lot of co potential for conservation there. If it's used, if it's managed just like the first cycle, I guess there is a lost opportunity there to to save uh, fertilizer, and also. In winter, uh, strawberry growers sometimes tend to um, apply uh, more uh, more nitrogen that is needed. This is also because there is some anecdotal reports that were never confirmed by the researchers that high nitrogen during strawberry production season, meaning spring and summer, reduces the quality of the berry. It, ma it makes them soft, and so. Growers swear that it's true. Um, researchers swear that it's not true. I'm some somewhat in the middle, but this is this is something that really holds back the application in in strawberries during during summer, and and as a result, then we see over application during during winter. Um, okay, briefly, sources of nitrogen. Uh, the um, well, the first source is mineral and in soil solution that can be in the form of ammonium, nitrite, or nitrate, but it just happens that in the soil there is some microorganisms that for their uh, metabolism, uh, just like you and I eat um, carbohydrates and we use oxygen to oxidize them and in the process we get uh, energy out of that. Uh, there, is, uh, there is microorganisms um, called um, nitrosomonas that turn uh, ammonium into nitrite, and another genus called Nitrobacter that turn nitrate into um, nitrate. So, basically, long story short, quickly, uh, whichever uh, source of nitrogen you apply to, to a soil, it quickly it quickly gets converted to nitrate, and then nitrate has all the challenges that I um, uh, presented earlier. Uh, another source is the mineralization organic matter. The reference points are about one pound per day uh, in clay and um, and half pound uh, per acre per day, I should say, uh, in sand. These are just rules of thumb, and um, and and the mineralization organic matter also is quickly is quickly converted to nit to nitrate. Then there is nitrate in the irrigation water, so the grower just by irrigating applies some nitrate if the concentrations are um, high and if it's an agricultural area typically they are um, the residues from the previous crop uh, particularly if it's in the same season because if it's the, from the previous season the winter uh, may the winter rains may leach most of that nitrate um, of that nitrogen that also as I said quickly co converted to nitrate and then fertilization and and amendments uh, is another source of uh, nitrogen. Okay, now I'm, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna let Erin run the uh, poll question. Everybody got it right, uh, they, they're all right, so nobody, it is a very democratic poll, nobody can get it wrong here. Um, so, yeah, uh, thank you and um, Hopefully this uh, allowed you to think about this concept a little more, and now I'm gonna uh, go on with the
presentation. Okay, the uptake patterns in strawberry and lettuce are very different. In strawberries, we have a slow and constant uptake. This is the shape of the curve. This particular um, uh, image shows uh, is from uh, Joji uh, Muramoto and Mark Gaskell and shows for uh, the uptake for organic strawberries. Uh, for the conventional, the uptake is higher. Uh, we're talking about uh, around 280 pounds per acre uh, of nitrogen per acre per, per season. And, the, um, and the, the daily uptake is about one to one and a half pound uh, per acre. And weekly sampling allow to uh, pick up the effect of mineralization and the contribution from uh, water. And the thresholds that are uh, suggested are uh, 15 ppm in winter by Dr. Khan and uh, uh, 10 during summer. But Tim Hart shows that high yield were achieved even with con concentration as low as 5 ppm. On the other hand, lettuce has a shorter cycle, has a faster uptake, about four pounds of nitrogen uh, per acre. And this is the threshold that is the 20 ppm. NO3 is the threshold that is suggested for lettuce and for many uh, leafy greens. Um, so these these are the um, thresholds that we have been used, using, and this is the equipment that we suggest um, growers use. We have a, we get a lot of questions about this. Uh, calcium chloride is needed to make the solution to run the test, but all it does uh, it flocculates the the particles of soil to to let them settle faster. So you can you can do the test even without calcium chloride. It will all, it will it will not be a quick test. It will be a slow test, but it will still work. So the calcium chloride that you can use it just turns out that the same the same stuff that you use to make pickles. Uh, is the same uh, calcium chloride that you can use for your test. So we suggest that you buy, you can find it online on Amazon for less than $10. And this little bottle is 150 grams. It will last to run tests to the grandkids of the grandkids of the grandkids of the grandkids of your grandkids because only one uh, uh, spoon um, of, these, um, of this calcium chloride will make enough solution for a, a gallon of the distilled water that you can buy at the, at the pharmacy for $3. Then you will need 50 milliliters uh, bottles. And you can find who, who would have thought that you can manufactured, manufacture self-standing centrifuge tubes. So you can find them, these also on Amazon, they will cost $1 each. You, you'll buy 10 for $10. But make sure you buy those with this skirt at the bottom that allows the the the, the bottle to to stand, um, and you will not need this rack. Uh, the um, strip tests that we suggest are the AquaCheck made by Hatch and the Merck MQuant made by uh, Millipore Sigma. Uh, the the latter is research grade. This number. This number here is the um, is the article number. So you will need this number when you go to the website to find it. And uh, one tube like this costs seventy dollars, and it has one hundred strips in it. Uh, the AquaCheck is cheaper. You can also find it on Amazon for thirteen dollars. It has less strips inside, but it's uh, it's still cheaper. And uh, you can look up this uh, 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 blog post where Dr. Michael Kahn analyzed both of them and they basically show that the their the results are similar and then you will need a stainless probe this is the only expensive thing it costs 100 dollars and we uh, suggest you use the stainless one the 33 inch by 7 8. Uh, so this is all the equipment you need this is briefly the summary of the trainings so we we did many trainings to a single person or sometimes we also um, um, trained groups. And so this is an idea. We worked with uh, many uh, different kind of uh, farms, big firms, uh, small farms, conventional, organic, strawberry, vegetables, um, big operations, small operations. Uh, in 2020, after COVID hit, our capacity to deliver um, 
trainings to big groups, um, of course, was limited. And so in collaboration with the FRAP uh, staff, instead, we decided to make these YouTube videos that were very successful. They're in Spanish. My colleague Angie here is uh, Mexican, and she explains on each of these videos, she explains a different topic. Each video uh, lasts 10 minutes, and I encourage you to go and click on them. I wish I could show them to you. Um, each of them shows a different topic, and much of these uh, translate to different crops. So if instead of, of strawberries in the central uh, coast, you're growing tomatoes in the Central Valley or carrots in Marin County, if your operator, if your field operator speaks Spanish, these they can watch these videos and, and everything will be transferable except the threshold of concentration of nitrate in the soil. But I'm sure that your local farm advisor will help you with that. Uh, another poll question. Go ahead, Erin. Yes, again, they were all true. So it's very important that all these all these sources are considered when taking uh, fertilizer decisions because your crop may have already enough uh, nitrogen coming from other sources that are um, not fertilizer. So all these sources are available for the crop. It's very important when you make your uh, nitrogen balance to consider them all. And the tool that we suggest you use, and in the trainings also we suggested this crop manage is a website made by Dr. Michael Kahn uh, from the University of California Cooperative Extension. It allows you, it gives you, it allows you to input the result of your quick test, and it it will give back a recommendation on how much to apply, and it automatically considers all those sources of nitrogen if you configured it correctly and uh, it makes it easier also to remember how much you apply and so it's also is easier for, for bookkeeping. And we did trainings uh, on this, on how to take the test, but also how to um, input it in on crop manage. This is a guide that my colleague Laura Murphy with the RCD of Monterey County did in Sp uh, uh, wrote in Spanish. Uh, you don't have to read this uh, um, guide. I got some bad reviews about this slide, so don't read it, particularly if you don't speak Spanish. You don't have to read this uh, slide. Um, Jerry Spinelli uh, uh, Spanish course is on another channel. Uh, all I want to, uh, to notice is that there is a guide out there. Uh, it's in Spanish, and uh, this is the approach. I want you to look at this uh, picture here. They developed this idea of the traffic light approach where they say, well, okay, if you have um, a concentration above 10, you don't need to apply nitrogen. If it's around five, think about it. And if it's lower than five, you definitely need to apply. And so maybe it's not the most accurate um, method, but it's very usable. So it's, the, it's definitely, it has the benefit that it's very usable. And so we took these approaches took a, a step further where we developed this other guide, also in Spanish, where we um, explain what is the equipment needed, and then we uh, also need the we also use the approach of you don't need, you need, but we are trying to be a little bit more quantitative. And so, for strawberries, depending on the concentration that is measured with the with the test, we we tell the operator to apply more or less nitri uh, nitrogen per week. And uh, then we also use this approach to for lettuce. Um, these are the common uh, available guides where you have to uh, do some math and look up a factor, uh, etc. And this is a barrier for many uh, growers and agricultural operators. And so instead, we built in this calculation into these uh, um, guides. And then I, I made one guide for each soil. So maybe I would visit a, a, a grower and I would say, okay, this ranch has sandy soil, sandy soil, this is your guide. And again, we are applied this for, for pound, at, uh, for, uh, for lettuce at the side dress and uh, the, the operator gets out how many pounds of nitrogen need to be applied per acre to increase the concentration from, more, from what it is now to 20 ppm, that is a suggested threshold. And then we also took it a step further 
and for each uh, common fertilizer, CAN17, 132A and 20, we made personalized uh, uh, guides for each kind of soil and for each uh, fertilizer. And because and in this way, we're also building in the, um, the calculations for converting from pounds of nitrogen to pounds of fertilizer and then converting from pounds of fertilizer to gallons of fertilizer that is also that's typically a difficult calculation for growers. Uh, last question. Well, so the poll again was everybody got it right again. Um, yeah, so again, the, the, the take home message is whatever you apply to the soil uh, in California conditions, uh, it quickly becomes nitrate is because bacteria, bacteria, uh, uh, bacteria and microorganisms in the field uh, in the soil converted to uh, to nitrogen. So again, every bit, everybody got it right. Uh, thank you everybody for the uh, for participating uh, in the uh, poll. And I forget, I forgot to say the previous slide, the one with the when you can uh, from the color of the of the strip, you directly get the pounds of nitrogen to apply. The problem there is that you cannot. Uh, use uh, you cannot uh, use the irrigation the contribution from the irrigation water so um, to do that instead you can use this sheet that is also in Spanish that walks through the calculation and uh, the, the operator gets how many pounds how many pounds of uh, um, of n per acre you have to apply and then from that number you can remove the contribution from irrigation water and this is the equation that is typically uh, shown but if your if your irrigator doesn't like math you can use this table so on the rows you will see the concentration measured by this by the quick test and in the column you will see the pound the the inches of water applied and in the in the cell you will find how many pounds of nitrogen uh, were um, were provided by the water, and if you don't, if you don't know how many uh, inches of water you applied, you can get an estimate here from for strawberries, lettuce, and uh, and uh, and other crops. So that's just an estimate, but it's the best guess. Um, I have two minutes left. Uh, uh, one of the challenges in strawberry production is that we see this is a production plot, uh, time on the x-axis and yields on the y-axis, same ranch same um, management different blocks different varieties you can see that the uh, yield can be strikingly different and um, dr michael khan calculated how much what's the uptake for each uh, pound of uh, fruit produced and so using those numbers um, now i plot it in terms of uptake and so you can see that this block uh, this block produce a lot higher yield and that took a lot more than this other block. So um, to, to refine the approach, you can, uh, for strawberries, you can, uh, at every moment of the season, you can adjust your nitrogen application based on the yields that you're expecting. Another challenge is in organic, these are the percentages of release that Cole was uh, talking about earlier. Um, this is challenging for growers. Everybody applies 442, uh, that is pelletized chicken manure, but they treat it as it was uh, four, like a four percent. But of that four percent, only 40 percent is available. And guano of that 12 percent, only only 70 percent is available. So really, it's not a 442. It's a 1.642 really. And the guano is not a 12. It's an 8.4. And this is a very Overlook, overlooked things in, in the field. And so everybody's treating this fertilizer as, as if they had the face value of fertilizer. So this is another big challenge that we see in the field. Uh, with this, this um, I wanna show, uh, if you're more interested in the quick tests, uh, these are some links that you can quick click. Uh, if you don't trust your eyes, uh, you can buy a reflectometer. There is also this cool a reference card that you can buy and then your phone will recognize automatically the color of your strip test and will give you a, a, a number and this concludes your tour 
Thank you very much and back to Erin.